number 856, number 856. Darkness. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather today in commemoration of the Holy Souls, let us take a moment now to turn from our sinfulness to God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven, grant, we pray, to your departed servants that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples. And the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth and the faithful shall abide with him in love because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me. In the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, 
Depart from me, you accursed. Into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least of mine, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. The four last things. Death, judgment, heaven, or hell. This is what the church teaches us. Well, what about purgatory, you might ask? What about that? Purgatory at the end of time goes away. But what is this purgatory? And it's very important for us to understand that if we are going to pray with the church for the holy soul. One of the problems with purgatory is the way we were all taught about it in terms of time and place. Well, you know, those two things don't make much sense beyond death. For God knows no time. God is not limited by a place. And so when we enter the divine realm and think, because we can't think in any other way, if just try to think of something without time or place or space. We can't even imagine that. But this place, <laughs> this process we call purgatory has a beautiful purpose for us. For us sinners. It is a place of mercy and peace. Not the peace or mercy that exists in heaven, but a place where souls can be purified. For those sins that cling to them that they could not shake off in this life, this is where God scrubs them away. C.S. Lewis spoke of the importance of that place for him because he knew, like all true followers know, that those stains of sin that have clung to us in life we want to be cleansed of. 
This is where God's mercy does this. But the mystery today and yesterday testify to something very important, and that is intercession. Yesterday, we prayed and honored the saints and asked their intercession for us. Today, we pray for those in the process of being cleansed after death. It means that this interchange from heaven to earth of intercessory prayer is living and effective. That the bonds that tie us to those who have gone before us do not end in death because those bonds of love endure eternally because God is love. As we pray for those today, being purified by God's mercy, prepared to enter the kingdom of heaven, as we prayed yesterday for the intercession of the saints for us here on earth, may we give glory to the mercy of God who makes all of that possible. <clears throat> Let us turn to our merciful Father with our prayers and petitions. For the church. May the Holy Spirit guide her in proclaiming the truth of salvation and the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our government leaders, may they be blessed with fortitude in their efforts to protect life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick, may the healing presence of God bring them comfort and peace today and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those gathered here today, may the Lord strengthen us in virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our beloved dead, May they rest joyfully in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to save us. Hear and answer our prayers this day as we seek your perfect will. We ask this through your Son, Christ the Lord. Number 774, number 774. Share the 
sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive Lord in your kindness the sacrificial offering we make for all your servants who sleep in Christ that set free from the bonds of death, by this singular sacrifice, they may merit eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, and by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to the earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 